Sometimes, no matter what path of insertion or tilt you choose, you may find that you do not have sufficient retentive undercuts on one or more of your abutments. In these cases, we'll prepare a desired amount of undercut where we design it for our proposed removable partial denture design. Here is a case that you'll be looking at. It's a Kennedy Class 3 arch. You'll find that you can get a 0.01 inch undercut on your abutments, but that the desired undercut is too low. It'll be right at the free gingival margin and at, on at least one of the abutments. That's too low. Placing a retentive arm that low will cause problems with gingival health. We want the undercut higher, but there isn't enough undercut higher on the tooth. We'll prepare an undercut where we want it, depending on the design that we've made for this partial denture. Here you can see the problem. This is where we want our undercut, but you can see that only the lip of the undercut gauge is touching and that the shaft is not. We don't have a 0.01 inch undercut where we want. We'll prepare it. You can also see using the analyzing rod that the area where we want the undercut is fairly close to parallel with our path of insertion. It won't take very much preparation to gain our 0.01 inch undercut. That's important. If this surface diverges a great deal from our path of insertion, you'll find that preparation needs to be quite extreme and may be impossible to do. Before you begin your preparation, look at the shape that the clasp is going to have on the tooth. You will have designed that when you drew your design on your cast. In this case, we're going to use a circumferential clasp. We want the retentive undercut placed right at the tip of the clasp, and we want it to follow the shape that the clasp is going to take. So it won't just be straight. It'll be deepest here at the terminal portion, and it will round out and be a little bit curved and fade as it approaches the beginning of the clasp towards where it joins the minor connector. It doesn't need to be long. Again, remember we're just dealing with the terminal third of the retentive arm. Use a round diamond burr or the tip of a chamfer burr to prepare the surface of the tooth for the retentive undercut. Follow the shape that the clasp will take and make sure that the deepest part is at the terminus of the clasp tip. Smooth out any rough edges. Here is a cast of a prepared surface of the tooth for the retentive undercut. You can see that the deepest portion is near the terminal portion and it does fade out as it approaches where the clasp will join with the minor connector. But you can see the preparation is only in the terminal third and the deepest part is the terminal portion of the preparation. Here you can see that the 0.01 inch undercut gauge now touches both a lip and a side of the shaft. That means we've got the 0.01 inch undercut we desired, and if you look down here where the free gingival margin is, we're far away from that uh, gingival margin, so this should be a healthy place to put our clasp. This is an unacceptable retentive undercut. It's just a small round depression from the round diamond burr. There is insufficient undercut for good retention, and this pit may be difficult for the patient to clean, and may result in caries for the tooth. This is unacceptable. Here's another undercut that's unacceptable. It's got a better shape and it tapers out towards the approach to the minor connector, but it's too low and it's a little bit rough. It's right at the free gingival margin. There wasn't any sense in us creating an undercut down here. It's too close to the gingiva for us to have good gingival health. Here's a case that represents another problem. This tooth is tilted severely toward the lingual. It looks like the shape of our retentive undercut is really quite good and the overall depth is not so bad. But if we take a look at it from the side in a minute, you'll see that because of the tilt, we don't yet have 0.01 inch undercut, even though our retentive preparation is quite deep. Here you can see that the lip is touching, but the shaft is not. We're going to have to prepare deeper in order to get this so that we have a 0.01 inch undercut. By that time, we may have prepared in through the dentin and have a sensitive tooth. That doesn't work. That's not acceptable. We'll have to figure out another way to make this work. We'll either have to change the tilt or the path of insertion of our partial denture. We'll have to select a retentive surface somewhere else on the tooth. Or we might even think about undertaking some orthodontic uprighting of the tooth. 